So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this penultimate session of today's uh, event. My name is Sarosh Daruwala. Uh, to give you a little background, I'm a hospitality graduate. So sometimes many of you might see yourself, uh, you know, I might see myself in your shoes uh, when you were hospitality graduates looking for higher education. But today, my conversation is about hospitality and beyond and how it's a multifaceted industry and how the world and universe of hospitality is changing. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, do we have any uh, uh, 12th graders, 11th graders over here? No? All right, no matter. Uh, so I did my IHM, then I graduated from one of the universities in Switzerland, La Roche. I graduated in 1985. I've worked with the Taj Group of Hotels for many years, F&B Service, and that was my forte. So while I enjoy cooking and still do to today, um, I ended up in food and beverage service. We opened then the first uh, Sichuan uh, Chinese restaurant, which was uh, Golden Dragon. Uh, we later pioneered with a restaurant, I don't know whether it's shut down, like all great restaurants shut down, El Bulli shut down in Spain when it was the world's finest restaurant. But we had uh, Zodiac Grill, which was uh, long considered the best restaurant in India. And you know what was the interesting fact about that? You came, you selected your items of a menu, one starter, one main course, one dessert, and there was no bill. You just paid what you thought you wanted or you felt was right for what you ate. Yeah, and our collections were always better than anticipated. You know, for I just tell you as a little nugget because you're all hospitality students here, for every camembert dariole, that's the cheese souffle, they would make six. Four would be binned, only one would go to the table. That's why it was so special. It had to be perfect. Okay, any case. Uh, I can go on talking about industry examples, but let's take a look at uh, hospitality. You know, when you look at a dream career in hospitality, what kind of student comes? Here are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself. Do you enjoy travel? Do you enjoy tourism? Uh, do you like going for a holiday? Are you open to relocation? Because in our industry, you know you can't stay in a place more than four years. If you're a general manager, four years is about as much as you'll get in a city, and then you have to move. So you laterally grow, but by changing your city. So you have to be someone with a sense of adventure, somebody who likes to travel, somebody who, who enjoys leisure travel as well. You think luxury is important? Yeah, you have to, because you know luxury means many things to many people. Uh, what does luxury mean to you? What conveys a sense of luxury? It's an experience. Yes, for people in experience, different brands. For me, it's the smell of a shampoo in a hotel room that gives me that, makes me want to steal it and take it home because it reminds me of a nice experience that I had when I stayed at a particular hotel. So luxury means different things, different brands mean different things to different people. You know, uh, you may resonate with some brands better than you resonate with others. Event management, you think event management is important? Yes, all of us in hotels, what is event management? Nothing else but banqueting, okay? Business? Yeah, important, not important. You know, I'll always tell you in hospitality, what is our job? I mean, if you had to crystallize it, what is our job? And I used to tell this to all my trainees. Our job is to delight the guest, you know, absolutely wow him and lighten his pocket. The second part follows the first. Because if you dazzle and delight, he'll be happy to spend. 
and at the end of the day it's a business and never forget that so business analytical skills these are some of the things i'll speak about a little later finally as a personality do you are you a kind of person who enjoys every day being different meeting different people working with different cultures you know that's do you crave variety or are you the kind of person who likes to go sit in a cubicle tap away at a computer you have to be a people's person okay this is this is a human job this is one no robot is ever going to replace and you ask yourself which industry can give you really all of these things travel luxury events and the answer is only one and that is hospitality okay uh if you look now let's take a look at the traditional hospitality industry when most students tell their parents hey mom dad i want to go into hospitality what's the first thing that comes to mind when you tell your family you tell your friends oh it's a career it's a career in a hotel it's a career in a restaurant in a bar in events in travel that's what typically comes to mind and this is largely what hospitality education has been in india about we were largely vocational programs and because i certainly don't even have a degree i just have a diploma so these were vocational programs where we kind of learnt all the operations and then we went into the industry and put those operations into practice and we learnt business on the job however the industry has got more sophisticated students require business skills analytical skills and of course all the soft skills that hospitality brings you know so and i'll tell you how important business skills are today large hotel chains that okay so take this hotel it's got a restaurant that restaurant manager is considered a business manager and his restaurant is considered as a business vertical he has to make a profit even if it's a housekeeper that housekeeper's role is considered as a revenue generation role thing i mean these are things that were not traditional so everybody's looking today large hotel companies are telling their senior managers if you don't have an mba in the next 2 years find yourself another job because they're now looking beyond operations to head businesses please remember this this what i'm telling you is very important and it's coming i see it when i talk to companies i see it when i talk to hotels so when you have a student now from hospitality who has all these skills operational business analytical soft skills suddenly the entire service industry started looking at our graduates and we found over the last 4 to 5 years the traditional hospitality industry has actually evolved into the international experience economy which means it's not just jobs in hotels and restaurants as we traditionally know it but in all these areas that you see on your screen from events to the sharing economy consumer relations social media e-commerce luxury brand management sports management consultancy real estate airlines finance and investment so it's become the experience industry and what happens is that hospitality has opened these doors today you find uh uh large companies tech companies hiring hospitality students and you'll say tech and hospitality what's why would an apple hire a hospitality grad i'll tell you why it's not to write the next app but it's to craft the strategy that connects and creates that emotional bond with their customer base how many of you use apple phones yeah would you use another one if i told you no why 
because that's how you've been conditioned. You have brand loyalty. The brand has created that emotional connect with you so that you stick with it. The same happens in, with all luxury brands, with Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton doesn't make money if you're going and buying one purse. They need you to come back every season and buy something. That's when they make money. And if you can afford that, you can also afford a Prada or a Birkin bag or something else. Why would you go back to LV? Because you have a bond with the brand. Okay? So to sum it up very quickly, hospitality in one word, if you had to define it, it is service. So if you had to define hospitality in one word, hospitality equals service. There are many ways to look at it. Uh, people ask me, you know, when is, is hospitality a job? My answer is no. Is it a profession? My answer is no. So what is it? It's a way of life. Everything that we become once you've studied hospitality, the way we dress, the way we speak, I think we just become better people. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, why is this service, whole service component important? Let me show you a little things. 70% of buying experiences are based on how customers feel they are being treated. And 82% of consumers will stop doing business with a company that gives a bad customer experience. You go to a restaurant, they're rude to you, will you go back? No, absolutely. The, yes, you won't even recommend. And, you know, if you do this, the benefits are for real. Simple 10% increase in customer retention gives you a 30% increase in the value of a company. Simple statistic, but see how important. Even when we had COVID, 85% of customers will pay more to a company which provides a better service. This is so important. That's why service is important. And most companies fail to recognize that. Customer experience is the key. And I'm going to give you a very, very, uh, an example that will probably resonate with you. I was looking for examples and then I came upon this one. is Starbucks. All of you know Starbucks, right? So what did Starbucks do? Take a look. They took the humble coffee bean, basically a simple commodity, made it into a fancy product, you know, all the frappes and everything, and then gave an experience. You can sit as long as you want, you have internet, you can work undisturbed. It created an experience. So they took a simple coffee bean, made it an experience, and see where it went in the value chain, right at the top. And I must say that Starbucks is being very nimble because they've just uh, introduced... Uh, you know, smaller portions at cheaper prices. You know, it's pretty much like FMCG products, that five rupee biscuit packet. I'm having tea, I'll buy a five rupee biscuit packet or a 10 rupee biscuit packet, have and I'll happy. So the same way they're trying to, you know, because in the face of competition, how they don't, they're not lowering their product, they're just making it a smaller portion and pricing it less. So you see how they are innovating as well in, uh, you know, to satisfy their customer base. So hospitality is uh, an evolving industry, as you can see. Uh, it's constantly changing, and, and we'll take a look at some of the new trends. I already discussed the first, which is it has become the experience economy. Second one is technology. You know, we say we can't, you know, it's a human business and everything, but technology is equally important. And I think in hospitality, one has to think digitally, but act analog, being a people's business. So you have to use the power of technology to get information and then use that information and translate it into giving a better service uh, experience, okay? Hygiene, we've seen that with COVID, what it has done. Uh, we had, uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, the terror attacks in hotels when the hotels were targeted. 
uh, and we saw uh, the kind of destruction and the kind of impact because essentially hotels which were largely open environments became closed environments. So you couldn't just walk into a hotel, you had to go through security and that has stuck with us forever. So will COVID's impact. It is here to stay in a sense that we will always be conscious of hygiene. Sustainability. Today, company, today customers will reward a company that engages in, in sustainable business practices. You take a company like the ITC, so they've gone really, you know, zero plastic, no carbon emission, uh, and they do it through little things. I mean, all hotels do it, but they've just seemed to have got off first off the block. So if you know, if you're going to use your towel the second time or you're going to use your sheets, you, they just tell you to put a little, you know, the uh, placard on that saying, don't change the sheets every day, I'll use them. If I don't change the sheets, I as the customer have just saved 300 liters of water. So now suddenly they're getting the guest to feel a part of saving the environment. I'm doing my own little bit. I don't change sheets in every day at home, so why do I change it in the hotel? But in doing that, I'm contributing. And the hotel can charge a higher price for that. You see what I mean? It's profitable and win-win for everybody. So when you look at hospitality, Let's take a look at some of the top 10 skills required post-COVID. You know, COVID was a kind of a milestone event that happened in all our lives. We'll never see it again, hopefully. But what were the skills that the hospitality industry requires? Complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity and innovation, decision making, and leadership skills. These are all important. These are all essentially skills that a student would get when they come to a business school, okay? But what makes a hospitality school great? The next line, emotional intelligence, anticipating guest need, people management, collaboration, cultural intelligence and diversity, and adaptability and flexibility, okay? The soft skills, trust me today, are what make us who we are. Today, a large company would, will hire you even if you have not the best technical skills because I can teach you that, but I need the soft skills. Okay, so keep that, keep that in mind. Let's take a quick look at some of the new trends that we've seen in 2023 in, in hospitality. Cultural connection. So today I'm in Chennai. Unfortunately, I'm not staying the night. But if I came here, I'd want to eat local. I want to connect to the culture. I want to eat where local people eat. Today, large hotel companies, chains, hotels, you tell the concierge, he'll organize a trip to the market. Uh, you know, you can go to the vegetable market, you can go and eat locally, where to eat this free food, where is it safe etc etc so cultural connection last chance tourism you take uh, the australia's great barrier reef the galapagos islands these places are going to be off limits to human beings very shortly so it's a last chance uh, if i get a chance to go i will go tomorrow because i know next day the government will say sorry you can't come it's too ecologically sensitive so Last chance tourism, the fear of missing out, foodie experiences, who doesn't like food here? Yeah. Okay, it's what we live for. So foodie experiences, more and more. You see the stories on Instagram, people telling their stories, sharing their personal experiences. We see this all around. Health and wellness. Okay. One out of every five dollars spent in hospitality is spent on health and wellness, spas, well-being, etc., etc. Airbnb ecosystem. You know, today Airbnb has overtaken the largest hotel chain, Marriott. Uh, it's an ecosystem, it's good, uh, and um, 
It's changing the way we do our holidays. Artificial intelligence, who hasn't used ChatGPT? You haven't used it? Yeah. I think it's a great tool if used correctly. You know, I think, I think it's marvelous. I, I use it quite a lot. Virtual and augmented reality. Okay, so this is also important because, sorry, I just got to switch my phone off. Uh, this is also important because uh, today uh, companies are creating augmented and virtual reality where you can experience before you actually come. So take a tour, virtual tour of the hotel, you know, take a walk through, see things, you know, and you'll have some guy who comes and shakes your hand and says, hello, how are you? And, you know, welcome. And you see the place, you see the, loca uh, the locales around. Uh, it's a great, great marketing tool. And of course, all this technology has led to smart hotels. Uh, and it's true, even though I'm not the biggest fan, but uh, technology, you can do uh, a lot of stuff and get a lot of service at the touch of a button which otherwise you had to call an operator, get connected to the department, request something, and then it would show up in the room. Okay, you're able to do things from your bedside. Air conditioning, the blinds that go up and down, you, you, can, you, can, you can, you know, sit in one place and get a lot of things done, and smart hotels are doing that. Hospitality is a bright future. I'm just going to throw a few stats at you. 9.8% of the world GDP set to grow to 10.2. 284 million jobs today. By the end of next year, to go to 346 million jobs. One of every 10 jobs on the planet is in hospitality. And for every $1 million that you invest, 50 new jobs are created. That's the gold standard around the world. Okay, you invest 50 million, you'll create uh, 1 million, you'll create five jobs. So that's uh, a little bit. Again, I'm sharing these stats with you so that you understand. I mean, you look at tourism, where it's set to grow. It's more than doubling. You look at your travel and tourism jobs, set to grow 38%, out of 62% are in our region, Asia Pacific region. India, this is where the growth is, believe it or not. Opportunity, money to be made is here. Okay? Different generations. I wanted to bring this to your mind. I belong, of course, to the first Gen X. So we were very loyal. We had jobs for life, etc., etc. But then you had Gen Y between 81 and 95, where they were more free, more flexible, and started spending some time on the internet. They valued experience and very independent in their way of working. And then Gen Z, all of you, you know, digital natives, uh, good multitaskers, entrepreneurial, you value your, prior, uh, your, your, your privacy, and you're also very health conscious. You see people working out at the gym, stuff like that. So different generations are there. And what we see worldwide, whether it's accommodations, trans transportations, business sharing services, it's all going from an ownership to a sharing community. If you had Uber and then you had sharing Uber, you know, so it's, it's now becoming more of a sharing community. So people are moving away from ownership to shared experiences. Now let's move over quickly to the students side. Let's take a look at a typical student profile uh, for a student who comes to study hospitality. What, are, what does an institute normally look at? Somebody who's a people's person, good leadership skills, a spirit of service. You know, this attitude to service is something that you're born with. It can't be ingrained in you later on in your life. Good language skills, good communication, good public relations, open-minded, tolerant, uh, you know, open to different cultures because, I mean, today no place, I mean, no classroom in India is even, uh, you know, monocultural. We're all multicultural people coming from different states, different uh, districts, etc., etc. Somebody, again, like I mentioned in the beginning, with an interest in traveling and, of course, good, reasonably good business skills. So the questions that you, as a student, you need to ask yourself, is this industry for me? Uh, sorry. 
where do I want to study and which university is for me? These are the questions that you would normally ask yourself. To take a look, how do you select a hospitality institute? And I say this to you from your already hospitality students, but in case there are some of you who are considering higher education in hospitality, which is what today's event is largely about, what would you look at? You look at the four pillars. You would look at accreditation in ranking. This is important. Accreditation, very important, because if you get a degree, who's recognizing it? That's important. Internationalism, you want to be in a place that is international, correct? Because the workplace is an international place. You want a program that gives you the opportunity to put into practice what you've learned, so an internship, that's always a very valuable, critical part of the learning experience. And you want an institute or a university which gives you good career opportunities. So look at professional placement data. Okay? This will throw light. As a, as a professional institute, its placement record is usually a good way to look at their professional recognition and success. See their success stories. If you look at institutes in India, they typically three to four years have an entrance exam. Uh, they embrace the cultural diversity of India. They have a single internship. They train students for the hotel and restaurant industry. They have a lower fee structure and a very, very strong operational focus, you know. Uh, I, in India, we do operations in year one, year two, year three. Uh, that's quite different when you look at international hospitality institutes, which are typically where you do operations only in the first six months. Uh, you, but there are multiple internships. Uh, there's the possibility to do internships abroad, of course. Uh, transfer opportunities, business and soft skills development. There's always a foreign language component. Uh, internationalism and cross-cultural experiences. And then you have hotel companies in India which also run programs, programs run by the Oberoi's, the Taj, the ITC, where you join them, you essentially work operationally for them and learn while you're on the job. Though honestly, I have to say, I'm not a big fan. Look, you've got your whole life to work. Enjoy being a student, okay? So as you can see, hospitality is a completely transformative education process. One which brings out the full potential of the student, both personally and professionally. So what happens when you come? When you come into a hospitality institute, you first enter. Then you learn, do all your craft-based learning, all your surveys, culinary, housekeeping, etc. Then you go out into the industry and you put it into practice through internships. Then you come back and you develop your business skills, all the while developing your soft skills, which basically make you employable. And that's what we call teaching you within a structured environment. Okay? The whole educational system is geared to bring you in as a young rookie and polish you up and make you into this professional. So, as you can see, it's very career-focused from day one. You have academic learning, you have practical arts, you have internships, everything which makes you career-ready. For those of you, you know, in postgraduate education, there are so many interesting postgrad opportunities. You know, luxury brand management uh, and guest experience, innovation and hotel development, real estate and asset management, these are all opportunities that students have when they go for higher studies to build on what they have already learned over here. I have a young lady over there who is looking at a culinary uh, education. Yeah, so I didn't speak much about culinary, but culinary education is also equally important, a part of our industry for those of you who want to become chefs. It's a, it's a great career to be in, but you have to be committed. So you wake up 
from the time you wake up to the time you sleep, you must only think of being in the kitchen. Then, you know, that's the career for you. So internships, I'm sure all of you all have done internships. These could be professional internships, being in F&B, front office, or cross-training, or they could be more managerial experiences, you know, working in sales and marketing, human resources, finance, etc., etc., etc. So, to explain this, this whole uh, journey to you, uh, I will look at the wine glass career graph. So, if you look at your careers, that's that represents your education, and I'll show you. So at the base of the glass, that's where you enter after 12th grade. The stem of the glass represents your undergrad hospitality studies. The base of the glass here is your entry point into the industry. And from here, to reach the top, it should take you typically eight to 10 years. Okay, gone are the days when it took 15 and 20 years to become the general manager of hotel. You travel around the country and I'll show you general managers who are 28 years of age. So, what I need you to know is with the kind of opportunity that is coming, uh, everyone has, uh, you know, to take comfort and be hopeful that with the right kind of education, the right kind of inputs, there's a great, great career waiting for you out there. Okay, and I talk to hoteliers every day. Uh, I just spoke to your previous speaker. And what are they looking for? I'll tell you in one word, talent. They get thousands of CVs, but what they're looking for are talented, young, bright minds. So be tenacious. All industries are difficult, but ours is at least a happy one. We meet people, we are always smiling, and we're in nice places. So stick with it, and uh, I promise you, you will grow, okay? I have a few mantras uh, for success, which are my own. You must have the right attitude, okay? I said this, you can't be born with it. You're, you have to be born with it, a right attitude. You must take pleasure in doing things for other people. You must have this passion for service, a spirit of adventure, a willingness to work hard and for long hours, and finally be respectful. And if you have this, you will have a bright future in our industry. So that brings me to the end. Thank you for listening, and please stay inspired. Our industry needs you. Thank you. <laughs>